And um, when I started and returned to training after cancer, uh, and cancer was um, rough, um, to put it mildly, and uh, I lost over 40 pounds during the course of treatment. And, um, you know, initially, when I started back to training, I'm like, ah, you know, I'll set the base again with a little bit of body weight training. And I figured out ah, pull ups are gonna be great. Like, I, you know, I was 205 before treatment. Here I am at 164. I'm like, pull ups are gonna be great. They weren't. Um, I was very, very weak, very, very weak at the, at the end of this. I mean, I had restarted my training many times, but this was this was truly restarting my training um, from a very low base. And then I said, well, let's go swings and get ups. I'll, I'll just go back to the classic kind of simple and sinister. What I realized was I wasn't strong enough for ballistics. Um, that sort of load and, and what happens during swings, I wasn't ready for it. And so I went, well, let's, let's go back to so-called strength aerobics. And so I started uh, with the 24 kilo, uh, kind of made it through 20 sets. The, and when I say 20 sets, that's 10 each arm, uh, 20 total. Um, I just like the numbers to be bigger, honestly. And you, 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 can, you, can, you can count your sets any way you want, but uh, I like the idea of saying 60 sets versus 30 sets. Um, so uh, that's kind of where I started. And I started with kind of the classic protocol. But then I started building out all of these different variations that I lay out in the book. And in the book, I call it choose your own adventure because at certain points in my training, I've, I've completed a session and then I go back to look at what, what did I do the last time I did this session? Well, I had to go back a year in my training log to find this exact session that I had just completed. Um, that's a lot of variation. So I love oxymoronic statements and, and I think, you know, iron cardio can be consistently variable and um, has consistent themes, yet wide variations on those themes. And so, uh, you know, fast forward, people started asking me, um, you know, you're going to put out any information on this? And I'm like, that's a great idea. And so I put together the book and, and you know, here we are, you know, talking about uh, iron cardio. Mm. And, and, and the name actually came from a, a student who sent in his training log and he had noted, you know, iron cardio, da, 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 da. And I'm like, wait a second. Did you mean strength aerobics? He's like, yeah, my old boxing coach, we used to call it iron cardio days. And I'm like, I am absolutely stealing that. I gave him credit in the book, but like that name was like, I love it because it's a little clickbaity, right? It's like iron cardio. Oh, what's that? And, uh, you know, whatever the case may be, an exercise physiologist all over the all over the planet went, no, that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> um, so it succeeded on many levels. And just, uh, you know, the the for people who don't, I mean, m most people will be listening to this podcast, will have listened to us talking about kettlebells over the years and, and, and various things. Um, so, so you doing, for example, if we take the classic, which is, you know, a clean, a press, a squat, put it down, fast and loose, shake off, and then, and then same on the other side and repeating for, say, a set amount of time or a set amount of sets. Um, why do you think that that, worked so well for you and was and was so appropriate for where you were coming from at that kind of like you said that very very low base of you know having had cancer and treatment and having lost 40 pounds and feeling like you know you, you'd lost the majority of your strength and you're obviously very deconditioned and and all the rest of it so what is it about that kind of method of training you think that 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 is so good for and powerful for, for, for when you wanted it so uh, right off the bat, like rebuilding that strength base, um, as I said, I wasn't strong enough for ballistics. And when we look at the kettlebell ballistics and the kettlebell swing, and, and I've been on a force plate, and the numbers that were given to me is that I was producing three to three and a half times body weight eccentric load at the bottom of a two arm swing. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a big number. Uh, that That's a lot of load to be taking through the system. Pardon me. And, and I just wasn't strong enough to handle that load. And I've joked for years, I'm strong enough to hurt myself. You know, mm -hmm. I, I know how to produce strength and summate my, my strength. Um, you know, whether it was bending nails or my previous powerlifting or, you know, whatever my experience was in the past, like I, I, I know how to use my body to, to produce strength. 
I, I wasn't strong enough to do that. My tissues were deconditioned to your point. So I needed to reset my strength base. But being at such a deconditioned level, I wasn't ready to take on what we would maybe call more traditional strength training and start doing a five by five protocol and and start, you know, loading myself uh, in in a or with a volume or anything like that. So single reps really succeeded. Hmm. So pop it up in a clean, good press, good squat, uh, eventually throwing a snatch in and, you know, different things like that. Um, so it really just allowed me to reset my strength base and it allowed me to accumulate volume. Quick story. Uh, there's a restaurant, uh, and that's a generous term, yeah. in Roanoke, Virginia, where I grew up called the Texas Tavern. And the Texas Tavern is an old, uh, like White Castle um, burger shop, if you are if you know what a White Castle burger shop is. It's a steel bar, um, but dented, beat up countertop, 10 stools, uh, White Castle little burgers, uh, something that was generously called Chili. And it was it, the nickname is Roanoke's Millionaires Club, and it's down in the theater district. And literally at two in the morning, you've got a couple dressed to the nines that just came out of a theater performance. Uh, you've got a cop, uh, two drunk college students, a homeless person, and you know, this cornucopia of society. And there's a line out the door of people that are waiting to get in. And there's a sign up in the back corner says we can serve a thousand people, 10 at a time. <laughs> well, I can get a hundred presses in one at a time. And so, you know, my, my mindset was I'm just going to accumulate volume in singles. And it just, it worked really, really well. 